Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love, and know your friendship each and every day, the breath of Christ the Father. Thy kingdom come. Good morning and welcome to Live at 10 on this Sunday that lies between our celebration of Ascension and the forthcoming Pentecost. A period that over the recent years has become uh, synonymous with those words like kingdom come, a global prayer initiative where we're invited to pray 
particularly for five people that we know who um, don't know the love of Jesus in their lives and can just pray consistently over that time for them. But just a time of prayer in general. And so um, as part of that this morning obviously we'll have prayers in the service and as has become the custom you are able to put prayers in the comments feed on uh, our Facebook page Catherington and Clanfield Parish Churches and um, through that we will incorporate those prayers in our prayers later or um, when, when we come to that. Just looking ahead uh, we are having our gathered worship so we have our 12 p.m holy communion at all saints and our 3 p.m holy communion at saint james today and and in the forthcoming weekends and that will continue while social distancing is is a requirement um, please do if you can register for those services with the parish office uh, by thursday uh, the preceding thursday at noon um, there's always the chance for space if you haven't managed to do that so you can turn up but you may we may be at capacity so that that's the risk there uh, next week is our pentecost service and um, hopefully we may be able to conduct those outside weather dependent and organization dependent and if we could do that we'll be able to have more people and we'll be able to sing together as we did on easter day and just to say uh, there is zoom for coffee uh, after this service uh, after this online service so um, if you want the zoom details drop me an email or pop a comment in the box and we can get together and just catch up for a few minutes after this see how everyone's doing and so we gather ourselves we're scattered still uh, in the mornings at this because um, the nature of things but in our spirits we can be joined through the Holy Spirit one to another. Please do join words with yellow if they help you in your worship. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So we draw ourselves together in prayer, our prayer for the day, remembering Jesus' ascension into heaven. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your Spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we travel through life, there are times when we just don't get everything right, where we aren't the fullness of everything God has in store for us. And here's an opportunity just to say, sorry for those times to join our voices together from wherever we are in repentance to say sorry and then the joy of that is to accept the wonderful forgiveness of our lord god through jesus christ the spirit of the lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed let us then open ourselves to the lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit 
and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And in light of that amazing forgiveness, let's just share words of peace from wherever we are. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now we come to words from the Bible. Words from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So Holy Spirit, will you come with life in these words? Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Reveal to us the nature of our risen Lord Jesus and transform us in that revelation. Amen. So people were amazed and full of praise for Jesus, we hear. His insights when teaching in the local area, he'd been out and about in Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And everyone had heard about this Jesus walking around teaching. Yet shortly after these words from Jesus we hear in his hometown synagogue. The people there wanted to kill him. They took him to a cliff. They were going to throw him off. Hmm. And I can imagine this scene in the hometown, them hearing of this Jesus, the hometown boy come good who's got this reputation of going into synagogues and doing things and everyone going, wow, and they go, Okay, let's get him back here, sending the invitation out. Jesus, Yeshua, come and have the Sabbath morning slot at the synagogue here. We've heard so much about the things you're doing. Come and share some of this with the people who know you best. And Jesus comes. And our Gospel reading from Ascension Day on Thursday also came from later in Luke. And Jesus opens his disciples' minds there to understand the scriptures and says that everything that had happened and is happening is written in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. And so here we have Jesus in his hometown giving an early instalment, a foretaste of that understanding, taking words of the prophet Isaiah and Jesus stating that here he is it. Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, is here. And in those words we hear what that anointing is about. Good news to the poor, freedom for captives, sight for the blind, the oppressed made free, proclaiming the time of the Lord's favour, all great things. What's not to love about those? What so wound the people of Nazareth up that they wanted to kill Jesus in this? There's either in a sermon I heard or a talk during my training that someone highlighted to me the importance of the words then he rolled up the scroll 
You see, if you look in Isaiah 61, where these words are found in the prophet, you see that actually the reading continues, this little bit of poetic prophecy continues beyond the words Jesus shared. And the next line is, and the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus was sat amongst Jews, his people in their homeland, their promised land, which was occupied by Romans. People who are waiting for a Messiah, yearning with all their heart for a mighty leader, with all of the qualities of King David, military and everything else, who would bring about the vengeance of God on these Gentiles who were ruling over them. They must have been shocked when Jesus curtailed that scripture and rolled up the scroll. And even worse, he sits among them talking about being the anointed one. And then misses out the best bit of that, gospel, that, that scripture. And then as he goes on, he uses his teaching to emphasize the work of God amongst Gentiles, non-Jews, at crucial points in Israel's history. Those were the things that so angered the people of his hometown. And must have created in them a sense of yawning disappointment. Have you ever felt disappointed in God? That hope, that whatever, that prayer that just didn't happen. In disappointment, what has your reaction been? What has my reaction been in that? More than once I've heard people say, I couldn't believe in a God who dot, 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 whatever it is. Or the question, how can you believe in a God who? People expressing the most heartfelt disappointment. The pain and loss of that. What do we do in the face of that? When we proclaim our Lord Jesus, our Saviour, the one who came, who lived human life. God made flesh, God with flesh on lived a perfect innocent life went to his death and then the resurrection there's the hope the ascension of jesus our king in heaven now in all of this what do we do and i think when we look in the news we see so many outpourings of that disappointment in conflict in war not least of which in the holy land at the moment the people who are still the promised people of God, but who are using their human means to try and bring about something. We see the pain, we see the loss of that continued disappointment. We see it all around us in greed, in all sorts of things, in, in just people living out the depth of humanity at its worst sometimes. Disconnected from the one who brings life. So who am I and who are we called to be in light of that, in light of our place in this world that is filled with brokenness, filled with disappointment, filled with loss, filled with people who are questioning why, what and how. But we're called the body of Christ here on earth. We are the incarnate Christ, the church, not just our little bit of it, but the church in general, called to be the fleshy Christ to the people around us to bring that good news not just to talk about it but to bring it practically to be hands feet eyes ears lips for Jesus so what is our calling in this together well the Holy Spirit is there for us we celebrate the Holy Spirit being poured out on the church at Pentecost next Sunday so we can say, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me. He has anointed you. What for? To proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me, he sent you to proclaim freedom to prisoners. Recovery of sight to the blind, healing. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. That's all very well, Richard. I hear, 
hear you say, but what does that look like? Well, I think as we start to restart things, as the restrictions of the past months, the past over a year, start to withdraw, then we look to do those things. We look at ourselves as we restart things, as we restart toddle on, as we restart things like Sunday teas, as we start things where we can gather and offer ourselves, we just look at them through the lens of good news to the poor, comfort and company to the lonely, praying alongside the sick, looking out for those who are caught in prisons of whatever sort around themselves and just sharing the good news that Jesus brings freedom to proclaim that our Lord God is good that the disappointments are human things and that Jesus is there waiting arms open longing to know them in this thy kingdom come days up to Pentecost. As I said earlier, the invitation is to pick five people we know who don't know that love and to pray for them just consistently that they will come and meet the living, risen Christ, the ascended Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, who loves each and every one at such a depth and such a level that we can't imagine it. Thy kingdom come, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a prayer for these few days. And in and alongside that, perhaps we could spend time preparing our hearts for Pentecost. Getting ready for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit into our lives. To anoint us. For all of those things. Amen. And in light of that call to prepare for Pentecost, here are some words that we can use in response. Just a prayer for today to carry with us during this week to come. After which there'll be uh, the hymn that's been prepared for Thy Kingdom Come seeking the healing of God in our communities, new words to the tune of Abide With Me. But let's have these words of response first. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. Amen. Transform, revive, and heal society. 
And so now we'd come to a time of prayer, time of speaking with God. And please do, if you have things for prayer, put them into the comments box um, on the live feed and we'll include those in a few moments time. If you're praying for a particular situation and want to actually name people involved, please only do that if you have their permission to share it publicly. So let's pray together. We pray that God's Holy Spirit may direct our lives. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. Father, we know that your world needs love and harmony. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is patience, kindness and goodness. Father, we know that our world is starved of love and care. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Father, we know that our world is short of truth and justice. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. And so we come to share our own prayers. Lord God, we thank you that you do answer prayer and we thank you for Penny's uh, progress. Thank you for the good news there from Sally that her sister Penny is recovering well at home. We praise you and we bless you for that. Amen. lift up to you this member of Marilyn's family who's just going through a very difficult time at the moment we can hear. Lord Jesus will you come and minister by your spirit into that situation to bring your peace, your comfort, your restoration, your wholeness, that life in all its abundance that you promise in Jesus name. Amen.
Lord, we pray for people who are not blessed with the low levels of COVID in our locality, Lord. We pray for globally places like India, places like South Sudan, the refugee camps in Uganda. We also pray for the people of Bolton and Greater Manchester in an area where it's picking up pace again, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Israel and Palestine, Lord. We pray for an end to the exchanges of fire, for protection around your people, and those just for everyone. Lord, come and make wholeness and peace. in that land that is so precious. So we join our voices. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And joining our voices together in prayer. There's a prayer request that's just dropped in for friends in Nepal and the churches that they lead. Yes, Lord, we pray for those church leaders. We pray for all churches in Nepal. We pray also for those who are seriously ill and commit them, Lord, to your care. Holy Spirit, will you come with healing in their lives? Amen. And so we join our voices together in the words that contain those that phrase about thy kingdom come being made one by the power of the Spirit as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, with words of faith, let us affirm the faith of the Church, which Christ commissions us to share with the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe 
and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so our time in this online service draws to its close. So just words of ending and sending before then we have the hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the Church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So we are raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.